mellow. Kind of in between extremes. <laughs> not too cold, not too hot, just right. A lot of what we confront every day in our lives isn't meant to blow us out of the water or surprise us. Daily we are experiencing the hand of God as he moves through the circumstances of the world causing it to be prepared for the eventual end of man's reign on the earth. Man was given dominion over the creation as well as the animals and set forth into a garden in order to tend it and gave that right over by way of rebellion to those who rebel against God, which the leader of any rebellion is always Satan. And any type of rebellion against authority always finds itself in Satan's territory as opposed to God's. Because if we trust that God is in control, then by his authority, he will take care of and resolve all conflicts with any authority. Sadly, we don't always find ourselves in that position, but choose to be rebellious. And unfortunately, sometimes when we do that, we put ourselves in God's way. And he lets us stand in the way when it would be better if we stepped aside and let God deal with the issue. In daily light, by faith Abraham called to go out into a place which he should afterwards receive for an inheritance obeyed. He shall choose our inheritance for us. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirs up her nest, and fluttereth over her young, and spreadeth abroad her wings, and taketh them, and beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldst go. Who teaches like him? We walk by faith and not by sight. Here we have no continuing city, but we seek one that is to come. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Arise you and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with the sore destruction. It can't be said enough, and it can't be reinforced, the fact and the reality that if you are putting your trust in this world, and you are accumulating for yourself possessions, you're going to find that all you're doing is building a kingdom for man and not for God. Because the reality is God needs nothing from you, but God wants to give to you his inheritance that he has with the fact of the reality that Jesus himself was made to heir of all things by his Father who gave to him authority over all things with which he will in the end take back the possession that God created in the beginning and he will cast forth all those that do not belong to him into the eternal lake of fire. What are you doing with that reality? Are you building for yourself wood, hay, and stubble? Or are you seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that you would have in heaven an inheritance that nothing can corrupt, that no one can steal, that no one can possess, except that God will protect and to guide and to provide for you in that when you come to heaven, you will be as one who has received and a bounty of things that you never knew that you had reserved for you as a blessing because of the things that you did now on earth. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. The heavens are not clean in his sight. How much more abominable and filthy is man which drinks in iniquity like water. Yea, the stars are not pure in his sight how much less man that is a worm. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. 
as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy, partakers of his holiness. The temple of God is holy, which temple you are. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, without spot and blameless? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So often people fall in love with creation, which is under a curse. They see the heavens and it declares the glory of God, but it's under a curse. They see the magnificent chasms in the earth and they think oh that's wonderful how God made that when in reality that may be an earth in torment that has up thrust and thrust out and been twisted and perverted from what God intended it to be when you look at creation and you look at the rose it's a beautiful bloom and you see one rose and you see ten thorns and you know that every thorn is an undeveloped bloom then you realize that creation has been under a curse for a long time and most of what we see hear feel and experience is cursed and is not what God intended. So how can you hug a tree, save a world, and decide that you're going to redeem something that has been cursed by God, that he himself has said, I will take my wrath upon not only man, but creation itself that has been corrupted, and I will cause a new heaven and a new earth to come. We lose track when we take our focus off of Jesus. We must always seek to find that place where we're always walking in line with what He would have us to do and not what we think we want to do, whether it be to the city and technology or to the country and agrarian or to creation and think that we're saving it from pollution. No, there is no Mother Earth. There is a created entity that God has made and caused it to be cursed by His doing because of what we did in the beginning. And God will redeem it from the curse. And we will live for a thousand years in the kingdom of God. But it still will not be our home. For we have a place in heaven with Jesus.